Catholic Daily Journal for Saturday, January the 19th, 2019. Today in 1953, more than 70% of American television sets were tuned in to watch I Love Lucy. The episode was Lucy Goes to the Hospital, and it aired 12 hours after Lucille Ball had given birth to her first child, Little Ricky. The filming had been done months in advance, but the premiere of the episode coincided exactly with the birth itself, and it was the first example of what we would call event television. The rating statistic of 71.9% of all television owners in the country watching one show has never and will never be surpassed. Lucy died in 1989, but her son, Desiderio Alberto Arnez IV, is 66 today, and he was born without any hijinks or pratfalls that made America love Lucy. And today in 1883, Thomas Edison's alternating current electrical lighting service went online for the first time in the town of Roselle, New Jersey. Edison was in a rush uh, to compete with the direct current system of Nikola Tesla. And while Tesla's system was cheaper to build over the short distance, Edison's alternating current could travel a long way across copper wires without degrading or losing any of its effectiveness. And so it was cheaper and more efficient in something the size of a city. It didn't hurt that Edison was a better salesman and was focused on just one or two products, unlike Tesla, who was trying to do everything all at once. And finally today is the birthday of American and Confederate General Robert E. Lee. He was the commander of the Confederate States Army and was renowned for strategy and in particular for battlefield tactics. And when Virginia succeeded from the Union in April of 1861, Lee pleaded for them not to go. He knew that he would have to follow his fellow Virginians. He couldn't fight against them. He couldn't do battle against them. And so whichever course they took, he knew he would go with them. And so he turned down the offer to be the Supreme Commander of the Union forces in order to become the Supreme Commander of the Confederate ones. Like German General Erwin Rommel, Lee's incredible battlefield skills tend to be obscured by the political assassination that is always heaped upon the losers of any given war. In the last 50 years in particular, the real history of the war between the states has been all but rewritten to make what was in reality a complex political battle, a war about sovereignty, economic rights, and the vast cultural divide between North and South, into a simple black and white righteous rejection of slavery. The incredible wisdom and nuanced thoughts of men like Robert E. Lee and Jefferson Davis and Abraham Lincoln and Ulysses Grant have been replaced by a bland label of racist or not racist, pro-slavery or against it. I've always appreciated that the birthdays of Robert E. Lee and Martin Luther King Jr. are only a few days apart. The men would have probably been fast friends. They were both deeply religious, deeply patriotic, and deeply concerned with the genuine welfare of the oppressed black population. And while Lee's actions and the Norris case, for example, were unquestionably harsh, understood as a function of his military disposition and the Protestant Christian views on slavery at the time, they make sense even if they are repugnant to the modern reader. General Lee died in 1870 at the age of 63. He was born today in 1807. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.